here, right? Right. Like I, I, I'm just like, when does your brain start adjusting to the reality that you can maybe have a, a legit job? I didn't know anything about this job. I didn't know anything about this job. I, when I was a kid, I, put on, I was at my buddy's house and he put on a Richard Pryor album. Okay, so Pryor was your first. Pryor was the first thing I ever heard. Yeah. The, the, the wino meets Dracula. Okay. I, that is the most beautiful bit in the world when you're a eight-year-old kid, you're Cuban, and you listen to that <laughs> because you're learning the language you just came from a place where you can't talk like this. Mm. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I'm listening to this motherfucker say some shit yeah. that is brilliant. And he's talking about coke, and he's talking about Dracula, wash your neck, you're a filthy little motherfucker too. Yeah. And I'm like, what the fuck? Then I was Bicentennial, how? You can't say the last name of it. And I bought the other one that you can't say the name of. Mm. Richard Pryor had like three albums you can't fucking name. <laughs> and when I show them to people, I got to show the album. Like, Sorry, can't say it. And I mimicked them. I knew the words. I knew everything. When I go to a party, I would do Richard Pryor. Wow. In fact, I would bring my albums to other kids' houses that were 12 and 11. There's a kid, Ray Canella, today. Every time I see him at Rudy's and Cliffside, he looks at me and he goes, do you know my mother's still mad at you for bringing that Richard Pryor album to the house in the eighth grade? I did everything with Richard Pryor. I love Richard Pryor, but I did. I came from a fucking North Bergen, New Jersey. I'm a Cuban kid. I didn't know what went on with it. And then after I got in trouble, I'm like, they really don't want. Mm. But just before I got sentenced, just before I went to prison, just before I committed that, that kidnapping, like two days before that, there was a guy at that Subaru dealer I did not get along with. We had had words one day. We just did not get along. And one night I was sitting there and he came over to me and goes, hey man, his name was Grant Fusmith. I still remember this motherfucker. And he came up to me and he goes, hey man, I know you don't like me, but I gotta tell you something. I go, what's that? He goes, ask me what I did before I worked here as a car dealer. I go, I don't know. You know, when you're, when you're 20, some old guys talking yeah, to you like, I don't know, go ahead, tell me. Yeah. And he goes, I was an entertainment director at a casino in Las Vegas. I don't know which one. But it was a big one at the time. Sands, I don't know. And he just drove to consider doing stand-up comedy. Just because he saw you busting balls, he saw you telling stories. Get the fuck out of my face, stand-up comedy. Take a fucking hike. I snort coke. Go away. That's I my mean, at the time, that was yeah. part like, of what, you, part what, of what stand up comedians did. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. said you liked Pryor, right? <laughs> what, yeah. are you, what are you fucking talking about, stand up comedy? Yeah. yeah. What are you talking about? Go away. Yeah. I barely chew and walk at the same time, <laughs> you know? <laughs> And then when I went to, when I got locked up to Camp George West, Thursday night was movie night. All right? They didn't have what we have now. They had the fucking reel to reel. Mm. <laughs> All right? <laughs> There's a projector going? Yeah, like a... <laughs> like an okay, yeah. And then it breaks and, yeah. you know, come on, motherfucker. It was yeah. our brother that was orange. Yeah. You know those brothers? They got freckles. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. They call oh, them yeah. red bones. Red, red bones, yeah. 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 Red, fix that fucking thing. Yeah. Fuck you motherfuckers. Yeah. And he would have to get up and fix the projector. Wow. And in the meantime, the guys would say, because in the kitchens, I would I would tell the guys, listen, don't eat that food. I would tell them, don't eat like chip, chip meat on the cream, all those type of weird feels. I would check the meat in. So I knew if the meat was good or not. That's uh, why I went to the bodega mm -hmm. to get the fucking meat and everything else for me and my buddies. So when they would come in, I'd go, don't do it! <laughs> and they'd all be yelling, all right, let's get out. Cuba wow. told us. So all the brothers would go, Cuba told us not to eat that shit. So I'd be yelling at them, don't do it! Don't do it! And then just fucking around, I had a friend in the kitchen, his name was Etchy, and he was like a, a blood. And one day he came up to me, he's like, hey, bro, you gotta help me out. I'm like, what's up? He goes, my freezers are slipping. <laughs> well, my freezers are fucking up. You gotta help me out. I'm like, what are you talking about? What the fuck is a freeze? He goes, a freeze. When you don't practice it, people could tell the difference in your voice. Mm -hmm. When you don't practice saying freeze, when you're gonna rob somebody. So, ah! so this motherfucker, this motherfucker <laughs> will come into the dining area and go, freeze! <laughs> he will go, don't report me. I, I just wanna try it. He goes, my brother got out of jail, didn't practice his freezes, he got locked up a week later. Because <laughs> his, freezes, his freezes didn't have no confidence behind him. I mean, bro, I'm like, this is a funny fucking situation here. I mean, that's a bit. It's yeah. a bit, it's a bit. Freeze, so I'm yeah. like, 
I would, don't do it, don't do it, this went on. And I became like the social commentary for the kitchen, mm. right? So now afterward, they would think like, Cuba, get up there and say some words. Oh, so they're asking you, they're yeah, pushing yeah. you to do it. They're going to get up there. Because, at, listen, at that time, we weren't as sensitive as we are today. Of course, of course. You could goof on brothers. We all goofed on red. Yeah. You know, everybody goofed on red. Yeah. Everybody goofed on the bikers. Everybody goofed on yeah. a retard that was, you know, yeah. you just goofed. Yeah. So I didn't have many material. He's got the white yeah. I didn't have any material written. It's not like I wrote material. Yeah, you just wrote I would go up there and just do fucking, uh, you know, uh, fucking whatever. Yeah. Look at this motherfucker with these fucking shoes on. What, your mother didn't get you better shoes? Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck are you laughing about, cocksucker? You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's it, you know. And, and one day the, the guy in the library was from Buffalo. He killed his wife and the mailman. The mailman was fucking his wife, wow. so he killed the wife Special and his mailman. They gave him like dirty fucking shit. <laughs> but the guy was a genius. And I'll never forget, he came up to me one day and he goes, hey man, here's a notebook so you can write your jokes in. And I go, notebook? I got no fucking notebook. I ain't got no, you know. He goes, you don't write before you go up there? And I go, no. And this motherfucker looked at me and goes, listen, I'm gonna get out of here in about two years. If I get out and you're not doing stand-up, I'm gonna hunt you down and kill you. <laughs> <laughs> what a motivational yeah. speech. And I got out of prison, and I was a pussy. It took me two years to get on stage after I got out, you know. Yeah. Kept giving myself excuses. And one day I just got up on stage. Where? Where was it? Comedy Works. What made you do it? It was in Denver. Comedy oh, Works. Oh, when, when you were doing the shows in the prison, was everybody there? Like blood, Crips, whites, every so everybody just decided, hey, we're gonna put away the beef and we're gonna enjoy this and we're gonna laugh at each other. There was no sensitivity, nothing. Nothing. That's the fucking beauty of it, man. That was fucking amazing. Isn't Nobody that... was sensitive anymore. We were just human beings back then. And they have every reason to be sensitive. This every... dude's cousin killed this guy's cousin. These yeah, guys beefed and, and over I, some crazy. There was shit. two brother-in-laws in there that there were a cousin and a nephew that were like at war with each other. But they Bro, sat down. I did time with the Barclays. The Barclays were a Colorado family, this white family, the nicest people in the world. They got into the cocaine business by mistake, mm. and they became billionaires. <laughs> like, they, they didn't even know how to launder the money. Mm. They just kept buying trucks for their landscaping business. They had every type of truck. And then the cops busted them, and they fucking, uh, they, the cops stayed there at their house and answered the phones from all the drug takes. And when you would come to buy the coke, they would arrest you. Oh, it was a hell of a story shit. in Boulder. But the Markleys, when I was doing time with them, and then they sent the, the father and the brother together in discovery, in court, they found out that the father was having an affair with his wife while he was at work. So I live with my wife in your house. You're my dad. You live upstairs. You're single. My mom died. And when I'm at work, you come down and fuck my wife. Wow. Holy shit. So they wow. tried to break them up for them to testify against each other. Of course. And wow. now I'm doing time with them. And they're not talking to each other. It's two different fucking worlds. I mean, they put that shit's in there. Where these, this is blood. And now they hate each other. It was fucking, it's a, I'm happy I did it. I never got really in trouble again after that. I never got to prison again or anything. Yeah. But it was an education, and it let me know I didn't what I didn't want to do. Yeah. yeah you, because listen, prison, anybody could do prison here. We could all do it with our eyes. It's just time. You got a book, you do push-ups, you eat, you mind your business. The problem with all that shit is that, I forgot what I was going to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta, I gotta stop smoking pot. Comedy? No, no, 